Well, greetings and say shut up, Ray. Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings and salutations, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel for Open Mic, the live open stream here, where all we do is talk about the things that you guys want to talk about. Never you mind what we were talking about before the show started. I forgot this was live. Yeah, <laughs> it's indeed you did. Indeed you did. Uh, good to have you guys here. Uh, of course, I've got Ray here. Oh, we got Jonathan Boyko is back there running things. And most importantly, you guys are here. Thanks a lot for being here. So like I said, here on Open Mic, all we do is take your questions. And we take your questions in one of two ways. If you're not here watching the show live, you can send in a tip question anytime, 24-7, to simply streamelements.com slash John Campia slash tip. And you will get your question on the show, of course. As always, if you, we deem your question appropriate for the show, or if you are watching live, you can actually send it in via the tip. Uh, dur, dur, bleh, let me try that again. During this, with the super chats, the super chats are now open, and we will leave them open for just a little bit longer here while we do the show. And that's what we're going to talk about. Good to see all you guys here. So, before we get going on um, on your questions, though, really interesting piece of news just came out regarding the flash now a lot of us have been wondering about how is the flash going to do because look we already we know it's great i've already seen it uh ray's seen it the the movie's fantastic you know, we talked a little bit earlier today about how the fact that uh stephen even stephen king who does not traditionally like comic book movies stephen king saying he loves it of course we heard tom cruise loves it the movie's great that's fine i think a lot of people are going to love this film but the question has been how will it do? And I've been saying, I honestly have no clue. I said, I won't be surprised if this thing makes $60 million opening weekend. I won't be surprised if this thing makes $160 million opening weekend. I, I just don't know. Because the movie's got a lot of things going for it, but it's got a lot of things working against it too. All I know is that this movie deserves, Andy Muschietti, who directed this film, he deserves every bit of success this movie gets, but how much success will it have? Well, Box Office Pro just put out their early projections for the opening weekend box office of The Flash. Let's take a look. This is what it says. Box Office Pro shared its first office box office projections for Warner Brothers The Flash before it opens in theaters on June 16th. The site estimated a domestic opening weekend of somewhere between $115 million and $140 million dollars. <laughs> With a domestic total projection of around 280 and 375, 115 to 140 million dollars. Okay. For the sake of the discussion, even if Flash opens up on the bottom end of that range, which is 115 million dollars, even if it opens to the bottom of that range, that is a remarkable win for DC because. Listen, the audience has kind of divorced themselves of the DC films, which is, you know, one of the reasons why James Gunn is rebooting the whole damn thing. You know, Black Adam couldn't even clear $400 million. Shazam 2 couldn't even clear $175 million. I mean, that was a box office disaster. Shazam 2, even though I like the movie. Actually, I like it quite a bit, but it flopped and flopped hard. If Flash can open to 115, listen, let me put it this, this way. Even at the bottom end of that range, if it comes in 115, that's just barely below the opening of Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which is an awesome movie. And that's a good opening. And we had a bet, right? We, we did. had a bet. Remember opening uh, numbers? I said the Flash would make more, so... Did we? Know. Did we yeah, make yeah, that? Yeah. I mean, it I... was just lunch. It was just lunch. Because so. you know what? I don't care. You said All Guardians... I don't remember making the bet, but that's totally a bet I would have taken. Yeah, yeah. So you're probably right. And, and to let recency bias, uh, with I don't want to officially announce anything, but the last two releases, Flash and Guardians, 70% chance those are my favorite movies of all time from each of those. Oh, like from well, the favorite DC movie? Yeah, yeah, favorite? my top Marvel movie, my top DC. So 70%, I just don't want to say that right now because they're both recent, but there's a strong chance these two, especially Flash, is my favorite DC movie. I'll tell you what. I Like I said, I would not have been surprised when you look at the struggles of the box office of the DC movies that have been out there recently. I would not have been surprised at all. And nor would I would have thought it would been all that terrible if they come out and said, yeah, it's going to, they're projecting $50 million opening weekend, right? I would have well, okay. Yeah, I mean, with all the struggles they've had, I mean, that would have been a better opening than several of their films. But my God, now let's look, what happens if it comes in near the top end of that range? And again, this is all speculative the theorizing here, but 
What if the movie comes into the top in that range, like 140? Well, now you're getting into Mario Brothers level. Like, Ray, double check for me. What was the, the official opening weekend box office for Mario? I think it was 146 million. And Mario Brothers, this little Mario movie, just, you know, happened to crawl into that little club known as the Billion Dollar Club. You're right. 146 opening. 146 opening was the number. Okay, so 146. So, I mean, look, we don't know that it's going to come into the top of the range, but if it did, it would be close to the opening of Mario Brothers, which is crazy. And listen, again, and look, you can feel however you want to feel about the Ezra Miller situation. I do not feel good about the Ezra Miller situation. You know me, I will never watch. Like, listen, I'm fine. They made this movie. They shot this movie long before Ezra Miller got into the majority of the trouble that Ezra Miller got into right? And all the nonsense that Ezra Miller did. So I don't blame them for shooting the movie with Ezra Miller. And so there it is. There's nothing they could have done. Ezra should never be Flash again. You know, I'm, I'm on record. I'll never watch another movie that Ezra Miller's Flash in. That aside, though, this is not Ezra Miller's movie. Ezra Miller is a hired hand in this movie. Just like the wonderful, talented person who was the set designer was a hired hand in this movie. Just like the unit construction people were hired hands in this movie. Just like the cinematographer is a hired hand in the movie. Ezra Miller is a hired hand in this movie. Just one of a thousand people who were hired to work on this film, play a certain role in doing it, whether you're hair and makeup, whether you're a director, whether you're a writer, whether you're an actor. This is Andy Muschietti's movie. And Andy Muschietti's movie earned, has deserved, in my opinion at any rate, all the success that he can possibly get from this thing. So look, am I surprised to hear 115 to 140? Uh, to be honest, a little bit, a little bit. Again, I, I knew it could open anywhere from like $50 million to $150 million, but still to see this number is very encouraging. And again, if it does open to these numbers, if, and that's a big if, but let me emphasize again something I said with Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Just like Guardians of the Galaxy 3 proved and if Flash opens this big, and we don't know for certain that it will, but if it does, this will also once again prove that there is no such thing as comic book movie fatigue. What there is fatigue of is mediocre movies. You put out mediocre movies, you're going to get mediocre results. You put out good, high quality movies in the genre, people will keep coming. Guardians of the Galaxy, super high quality comic book genre movie, the audiences came. Flash is a super high quality comic book movie, and hopefully it means the audience will come. So uh, anyway, I just thought that's really, really um, fascinating information coming up from Box Office Pro. Again, they will readjust their projections as we get closer to the release. We're now just under a month. So as we get closer, they'll adjust their projections. We'll take another look at this. So again. that was the first time they projected. The I believe it is. Okay. I believe okay. it is. I, if, if they had put out an even earlier projection, I didn't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. But this is the first one that I'm aware of. Okay. Anyway, guys, questions. What do you think about that? Uh, whatever you guys think, jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. And with that down, guys, let's let's hear from you. You got questions about the these box office projections for The Flash? You got questions about... Hey, DC, we just put up a video about this. It is up, right, Rick? Yeah. Okay, we just put up a video about Jeff Loveness, the writer of Quantumania, who was supposed to write Avengers Kang Dynasty, has just been dropped from Avengers Dynasty, according to reports. We'll talk about that. Anyway, you guys got questions about anything? Let's get to it. Now, we're going to start off with a couple of questions that people sent into the tip link. So, Jonathan, what do we got? We got great Grabthar's hammer. Love it. I lo love these, these references. Uh, hey, crew, whenever you guys talk about IMAX, I just wanted to know, how big are your screens? It's a little personal. Uh, my only experience <laughs> with IMAX is the one in Sydney, which was 117 by 97 feet, eight stories high. Saw the first Avatar and Titanic on that screen. Ooh. Well, there are there are two different... I mean, I'm not an expert in IMAX. I, I don't generally go to IMAX yeah. very much. I like AMC Prime Dolby. But if I understand, there's basically two general flavors of IMAX. There's your standard theatrical... IMAX, which is a big screen, but it's yeah. not IMAX big. Some people call it LIMAX because it's a lie. Get yeah, it? but the oh, aspect, wow. it's the you aspect call it that. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Not me. But it's the aspect ratio is what yeah. makes it the. Yeah, so they so there's those, and then there are the true full size. Oh, yeah, now, I believe. Huge. Yeah, massive. Yeah. Jonathan, you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong. I believe in the Los Angeles area, mm -hmm. there are only three 
I think there's one at um There's one at the Science Center. I know that. Over by the Coliseum. Okay. It's mass. It's like that eight story. But is that a is that a movie like a movie plex or is that, it just the science? That center? is where that's like the eight story where you go and see like depths of, of the Atlantic. And okay, you so down, you're not you know. going there to watch the latest blockbusters. Yeah, right. Okay. But I mean for a general movie going public, I mm -hmm. there's I know the AMC at Universal City Walk in yeah, Los Angeles has one. one. There's a Regal in town that has one. I think there's three. I could there might Hold be on. four, but Obviously, there's not yeah, many. There's, Definitely one in Burbank too, the 16. The but, no, no, I don't think the one in the 16 is a true full IMAX. It's oh, called you're IMAX. About the 94 by. Uh... Well, are you talking about the size, the the huge size? I mean the legit actual oh, yeah, full yeah, yeah, real yeah, yeah, IMAX yeah, yeah. screen. There's only a few. Yeah, there's only a handful of them in, in LA. So I I don't I couldn't tell you what the actual dimensions of those are, but yeah, right. you are more likely to get the theater size friendly ones and and the other ones. So, all right, what's next? All right, Tristan uh, Riera. It says two of two, but it's just one. Um, as a visually impaired person, I am grateful to have Daredevil. And I don't know of any other action main character with a disability. There's The Accountant with Ben Affleck, brilliant movie, but I can't think of another one. Thoughts? Well, there's Echo uh, coming well, out. Well, we got Echo. Yeah. Uh, Echo's another one of them. Um, there was also the one in The Boys that Homelander killed. Uh, oh, right. I, I'm trying to remember the name of that of that character. Is that the um, one who could see like the cartoon characters? What's that? Was he the one in the boys that saw like the cartoon characters in his head? I don't. No, no, no. That was. Um, he looked like Snake Eyes, the guy I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's that. That's uh, uh, Black Noir. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. There was. They were doing tryouts for a new member of the Seven, and the company had selected this this one dude, and I can't remember if he was partially blind. Blind spot. Was that his name? No, no, blind no, no, spot. No, no, no. He is blind, but super, yeah, blind spot. Yeah, was that his name? Okay, yeah, but then Homelander killed him. You know what? Yeah, there's not many that I can think of that that are uh, that are like, that's a very, very good question. But you know what? Listen, this is the thing. People who see representation of themselves everywhere they look completely take representation for granted. Representation matters. And you can be a fucking moron and go woke all you want. You want you want to know a test and look at somebody who uses the word woke. That to me is an automatic moron. But but the reality is when you're somebody like me, white straight male, like I I don't representation doesn't even register with me because everywhere I look is representation of me. The first twenty films of the MCU was all of them the lead characters in all first twenty. MCU films are straight white males. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yay, I love being a straight white male. It's great me being too. a straight white male. I love it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you too, Ray. Yeah. By marriage. Oh, By wait, marriage. No, no. I, I, yeah. You're straight white male in law. Look, <laughs> I love seeing I le love seeing Ned on on the screen. Even if he doesn't have any powers, he has small parts. Right? I love seeing Ned on screen because I'm like, there you go. You know what I mean? And I love when I saw the the people in Phantom Menace, um, the gun grays. <laughs> the but, yeah. but in all seriousness, <laughs> like Anne and I were okay. watching an episode of Rookie, the Rookie, right? And all of a sudden, one of the characters who I didn't realize was Filipino, one of the characters starts speaking Tagalo. Anne's in the other room and she comes running in the room. She goes, is there a Filipino in this show? I'm like, yeah, I, I knew the girl was half Asian. I didn't know she was Filipino. I remember the first time watching, when I was watching UFC, and the first time they had an Italian UFC fighter. For those who don't know, I'm also Italian. My real name is Giovanni, actually. Mm -hmm. But a, an Italian fighter came into the ring, and I got way more interested. And I, I feel that way as well as when a Canadian fighter comes in there, right? Do not underestimate for other people the power of representation. It's actually huge. And it's usually the people who've never had to worry about representation or have never even had to give representation a single thought, they're the ones that go, oh, there's no, there's no who cares? Representation doesn't matter. They're the ones who say, I don't care. Like, it, it doesn't matter and, what they are. That's great for you, but representation actually matters. It means a lot to people. And, and you know, it goes even deeper with a disability, I imagine. Like, because uh, they Yeah, would, I bet you're right. If they if they portray like a real, like that, that, that disability, they'll uh, relate to what they're going through as in like, oh, I remember when I took my that first step or whatever with my new legs or whatever like that. So it goes even deeper with that. So I, I'm glad that we're hitting all aspects of life. Like nothing's perfect. Like yeah, you, it you is, have to see imperfection in order to appreciate. All you know. it is when they, when, when Hollywood, which for over centuries had 
a agenda of exclusion for over a century. And now we're starting to finally see studios put that agenda of exclusion away. And they're starting to make characters in these movies look like the real world around us. I have people in my life and in my circles that have disabilities. I have people in circles in my life that are black, that are white, that are Asian, that are men, that are women, that are straight, that are gay. That are... So why wouldn't the movies I watch reflect that unless you have an agenda to keep them excluded? Anyway, I think yeah. representation really matters. It means yeah. the whole deal and just, it's great. Anyway, all right. I'm glad you have that in a character like Dev. See, I never would have thought of that. I'm glad you have that. All right, what's next? All right, Advith writes, so, so many of my favorite shows are ending this year. NCIS LA, The Blacklist, Barry, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Doom Patrol, Ted Lasso, The Flash, and maybe even Superman and Lois. Yeah, there it's a big swat. I didn't you know, know the, I'm I'm a big fan of Blacklist. I didn't know it was still going. Yeah. I haven't watched this new season. I, I haven't been able to get because it started when I didn't even realize it started, and all of a sudden there were 10 episodes in. Um it's kind of funny because th there's an Aaron coming story there. I was watching the Blacklist, one of the shows I really like watching. And all of a sudden Anne's like is that Aaron? Because she was the main guest star one week. I'm like, no, that can't be Aaron. She would have told me she's in this. But nope, sure enough, it was Aaron. She and he doesn't have to get sad about NCIS. They're going to have another one called yeah, another NCIS one. Costco or something. So NCIS they'll be Costco. Everywhere. Yeah, they have to go everywhere first. Do you remember, like, back at like Collider, we started doing those after shows? Yeah. I was Blacklist there, was one of them. Yeah, that's how long ago that started. Oh, my God. The God, wow. that, that dates it a lot. All right, All what's right. next? Uh, we've got Razor who writes, recent quotes from uh, Chuck Woody Wuji suggest he might not be done with the MCU. He was a top five MCU villain for me. If he turned out to be a King variant to solve the Jonathan Majors problem and gets reused, I wouldn't mind at all. I wouldn't want him to play a different character. Though. Yeah, I, he, there was no Kangisms to him, really. I mean, Chuck Woody Wuji is great. I love him in Peacemaker. He was really quite good as the high evolutionary um, and listen, with characters in the MCU, you can never put the final nail in it. They might be gone. They might not be. <laughs> All right. What's next? All right. Moving on to supers here. Um, okay. Raymond Verrata writes, oh, and a he sends in a $20 oh, super Oh, thank you, Raymond. Uh, Marvel is kill killing off Kamala Khan in Amazing Spider-Man 26. I don't read Miss Marvel, and you always say that MCU is different from the comics. But as a person of color, it makes me sad. It might feel awkward when Marvel's opens. Here's, here's the thing, Raymond. I think maybe seven people who go to see the Marvels have read a Ms. Marvel comic. I mean, that's unfortunate, but that's, that's the reality. Just it's, we don't have the numbers, by the way, Jonathan, we should probably close down the super chats. Um, oh. when you actually look at the numbers, it's just not a lot of people read comic books today. I mean, I remember John Schnepp used to go through those numbers and the numbers have only dropped. Mm -hmm. He used to talk about the numbers of how many people are acting like a real practical thing. So I don't think it's going to mean that. Plus, the other thing is this. I lost count how many times they killed Wolverine in the comics. I lost count of how many times they killed Captain America. They've killed Captain America in the comics. Guess what? He came back. They killed Colossus in the comics. Guess what? He came back. They killed Superman in the comics. Guess what? He came back. They always come back. They're never gone. So I, I really wouldn't worry about about it very much, Raymond. Uh, don't stop uh, reading those comics if you love them. Just stop, just keep reading. I, the only reason why I'm not reading comics is I can't find an arc that I like. I started Blade, the new Blade reboot. I just didn't like it. So hopefully I can find something that uh, I could go back to the comic book shop across the street. All right. What's next? All right. Ba uh, Bailey writes, I love the new White Men Can't Jump for an acting debut. Jack Harlow was charismatically funny. It's no Oscar movie, but my new guilty pleasure film. I, I don't think I'll ever bring myself to watch it. I got to see that. Really? You're interested in it? I, I, I there's, why not? I, I mean, there's nothing. I didn't know this was a movie that interested you. No, Jack Harlow. I mean, come on. I mean, the trailers looked okay, but I will have to sneak into your Hulu sometime. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that wouldn't be new. Yes, that's All my right. problem. <laughs> What's next? All right, we've got, uh, sorry, I just did Bailey. James Walsh. James Walsh. No spoilers after Fast X ending. I don't care about characters' deaths because there are no stakes. Will you do spoiler review of Fast X? Yes, yeah, Sunday we're going to do a spoiler. Like, I wasn't planning on doing a spoiler review for Fast X, but after I watched the movie and I saw how many freaking bloody plot holes there were in it, it's like, I got to talk to somebody about this. <laughs> So we're going to do an open spoiler discussion for Fast X on Sunday. And yes, you're right. There are no stakes in the Fast and the Furious universe. None. None at all. All right. What's next? 
No gravity either. James Walsh writes, <laughs> average Star Wars fan could never justify paying five grand for a two-night stay on the Star Cruiser. Did Disney think there was enough rich Star Wars fans uh, that would pay it? Uh, would you have spent five, five thousand or five grand on it? Not if a slave leg gave me a handy in it. Whoa. No. No. And you know I mean that serious because I love my slave Leia handies. That's why Ray's going, oh, listen, no. <laughs> like, I, I still remember when they first announced this thing. And I remember thinking to myself, what the actual fuck do they think they're doing? What the fuck do they think they're doing? It was one of the most idiotic things I'd ever heard. Look, you want to have a plush, supreme, exclusive, grand experience hotel thing? That's cool. Don't put the name Star Wars on it because all you're doing is making it feel like the regular people aren't allowed. Mm. You never want to put your brand on that. Never put your brand on something that tells your, your, the, the vast majority of your audience you are not allowed. Wasn't there a hotel in Las Vegas that did? I remember, I think I tried to walk through Bellagio and I was just wearing casual clothes. And I think the guy at the door said, no, you can't walk through. Like they, some hotel. Really? Yeah. But when see, they first like open, a Bellagio. I like again, when they first you, open. Yeah. If you you have an exclusive club, that's fine. I have no problem if Disney wanted to open a hotel and have it be a like ten thousand dollar a night hotel. That's fine. That's cool. But don't then slap the Disney Princess Hotel on it. Don't slap Star Wars on it. Don't slap the Pixar overnight stay experience hotel on it because all you're doing is now you are ex you're associating exclusion from your fan base of that thing. And look, I, again, I don't have a star Wars hotel, but make it, you know, 300 bucks a night, make it 500 bucks a night. If you want, well, I, mean, I don't honestly, get, but like $5,000 a night. I don't know anybody. Yeah. And I, and I mean this, I know a lot of star Wars fans. I know a number of Star Wars fans who are much better off financially than I am. And I don't know anybody who even remotely considered going to that hotel. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, that's me. Rant yeah. ended. Yeah, Let's yeah. move on. What's oh, wait, next? Hold on. Uh, no, we got to keep going. Oh, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. we're short on okay. time today. Let's keep going. All right. Uh, the Empire Strikes Backstreet Boys writes, Hi, Jonathan. Hello. Stock question. Okay. I don't necessarily think the government will default on its debt, but should I sell any stocks ASAP in which we... Uh, as we inch closer to June 1st. Well, I can't give financial advice and we don't give financial advice on this channel. But aside from stocks, no, I don't think we're going to uh, default on our debt. All right, what's next? Um, Azaz back. Uh, was hoping for better than okay reviews for Indy 5. Again, yeah, some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Uh, not what we were hoping to hear. Somebody who was excited about this movie and looking forward to this movie, never asked for this movie, but excited for it nonetheless. It's... It's disappoint. It's disheartening to hearing the review, especially since I know some of the critics that wrote negative reviews. I know that a number of those negative reviews came from critics that were very, very excited for this movie and were really looking forward to it and wanted it to succeed. So uh, a little disheartening. All right, what's next? All right. Oh my gosh. Two Wongs make a, a right. Uh, <laughs> Ray, I think that was for you. I know, I know, I know. And I had to read. I should have made you read it. Although I predicted the surprise at the end, I thought Fast X was a lot of fun, stupid fun, but I can't wait for Fast X Part 2 when CPS has to take Dom down for endangering his son in Fast X. Yeah, um, again, you saw that in the trailer, him driving his son down the side of a, of a thing. It's Look, make no mistake about it. It's a really stupid movie. It's really dumb. Um, I, the, I Look, Louis Leterrier is a good filmmaker. I don't know what got... I don't know if somebody poisoned his soup... I don't know if he like is in some kind of drunken stupor all the time. Wow. I mean, that I mean, there are so many things about Fast X that is one of the worst movies of all time. <laughs> but you should see it. <laughs> but from the guy who said I should stick my finger in my ear yesterday for <laughs> boohooing it. But Jason Momoa is great in it. And the action's really good. And and there's a lot of action. Like it's not like five action scenes. There's a lot of action through the entire thing. It's not funny. It's not clever. It's not well-written. It's not well-developed characters. It's stupid in so many ways. This is bad filmmaking. But if you're going for the vroom vroom, 
you're probably going to have a good time because they do the vroom, vroom really, really good. And Jason Momoa is great in it. So there is there is entertainment to be had in this movie. 4DX, baby. That's the only way. 4DX. Think now. All right, what's uh, next? Uh, Brandon Nezamudin writes, great news. <laughs> While not confirmed, multiple sources such as Jeff Snyder are saying that Jeff Ludness is no longer writing King Dynasty. Correction. There are not multiple sources. There is only one. It's just Jeff. Everyone else you see reporting it is just quoting Jeff. Now, now Jeff is not always right. But he's right a lot. He's, <laughs> he's, right. he's gotten a number of like really, really big ones. And so if Jeff is saying that they've let him go, it's probably safe to go on the assumption that they've let him go. And, you know, we talked about that. Uh, we made a, a, a standalone uh, editorial video about that. It's now up and on the channel. But, I mean, it had to happen. Look, that dude, Jeff Loveness, I hope he goes on to have a fantastic career. They let him write Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania with nothing but Rick, Rick and Morty uh, and uh, Miracle Workers, that little uh, Daniel Radcliffe show that nobody watched. He really did not have the experience for that. But, you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is a relatively small-ish kind of MCU film. And you know what? It just showed that he wasn't quite ready for primetime. Maybe he will. Maybe he'll go on to be the greatest comic book movie writer of all time, but he's not there right now. He's not at the place that he should be writing a, an Avengers movie. So it's probably for the best. All right, what's next? Okay, yeah, this one's for you, Ray. Unknown writes, uh, saw Fast X and 40X. And the movie was, eh, but the experience in 40X was worth it. Felt like a roller coaster for two and a half hours. I yeah. loved it. Didn't you watch Top Gun Maverick and yeah. 40X with your two sisters? Yeah. What did they think of the 40X? My older sister, Olive, she hated it. She was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> and then as soon as she said that, water squirted it in <laughs> our faces. And she's like, oh. Because she had her expensive bag, so we turned it off. But there's a part where the snow, when they're in the snow, right? And snow came down. I was like, "That's so cool!" And then <laughs> again, you know, fast, uh, fast X will probably be really cool on it, though. All right, right, guys. Hey, listen, we've got a few more questions to get to, but before we do, we need to take a quick break here for a second and thank a couple of the sponsors of today's episode of our open mic, my mobile service provider, Mint Mobile, and of course, our friends at ExpressVPN. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, ExpressVPN. Guys, it is 2023 and online privacy and security has never been more important. You see, every device, phones, computers, tablets has a unique IP address, which is like an internet phone number and reveals personal information about you. It's super simple for somebody online who knows what they're doing to find your IP address. If you've ever clicked on a sketchy link or opened an email from somebody you don't know, your IP address could become exposed. Now that's where ExpressVPN has your back. ExpressVPN is an app that hides your real IP address and replaces it with a dummy one, keeping you safe and private. And you don't have to be some kind of techie to use a VPN. Guys, it is so easy to use. Just download the ExpressVPN app on your phone or computer, tap one button to turn it on, and you're protected. And if you like your streaming entertainment, here's the coolest part. They let you choose what country you want your IP address to look like it's coming from. This is incredibly useful because services like Netflix and Disney Plus give you different shows depending on what country you're in. So secure your family's online activity and unlock tons of new shows by visiting expressvpn.com slash campia. Use my link and you can get three extra months free. That's express, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash campia. Go to expressvpn.com slash campia to learn more. We want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, your utility bills and favorite streaming services, inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, there's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It's Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. You guys know that ever since I switched to Mint Mobile, I've been saving almost 70% a month over my old phone plan. For people looking Looking for extra savings this year? Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. 
Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. And thank you to my mobile service provider, Mint Mobile, and of course, ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode of Open Mic. Remember guys, when you go check out and support our sponsors, you're actually supporting us. Look down in the description of this video, you'll find links and promo codes to our sponsors. And thank you again to ExpressVPN and Mint Mobile. All right, guys, let's finish off the questions you guys have sent in, shall we? Jonathan, what do we got up next? All right, we've got Matt Mobile who writes, been listening to the show mostly through Spotify while it works since 2020, and I love it. People will get used to it. Thank you for all the hours you guys have kept me from going crazy at my job. Much love. Oh, uh, thank you so much for that, Matt. Yeah, look, we we made the announcement, for those of you who might be late to the party, we made the announcement that the John Campia show is now a podcast only. It's audio only. Um, it makes our lives about 80% easier uh, to do the show that way instead of uh, as a live at, or as on video. And, you know, we, when I made the announcement, I said, Hey, we're still going to do, you know, every day we're going to have like open mics. We're going to have two to three editorial videos. We're going to do open spoiler discussions, stuff like that. And we are so, uh, you know, the clips that are up, the clips, they're not clips. People are referring to the short videos that we put up as clips. They're not clips from the main show. We record those as their own standalone videos. And we do, uh, we pick a couple a day that we're going to make. We just made one. The reason today's show was like a half hour late because we had to make one for the uh, Avengers Kang Dynasty writer story that came out. But uh, yeah, it is audio only. It makes it, again, it's made... It's made my life much happier. <laughs> the fact that we moved into a podcast. You know what? It's not going to be for everybody. I get that. A lot of people prefer a video show. A lot of people prefer a podcast. Podcasting is a huge industry right now. It's massive. But some people get used to the video version of the John Campus show. Others don't. But it's I'm surprised how many people have written into me that said, you know what? I've only ever listened to your show anyway. Like I never sat down in front of my computer to watch the show. I've always just listened to it either on podcast form or I bring it up on YouTube and just play it in the background. And, um, and yeah, so thank you so much for that. I'm glad you're still there listening. All right. What's next. Okay. We've got Neil before Zimmer. Uh, Hey John, how do you rank flash among DCEU f films? Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I still prefer man of steel it might be my second favorite DCU film. I, I might even like it more than James Gunn's Suicide Squad. And I love James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Um, I think I, I like it more than Aquaman, certainly. I like it more than the, the original Wonder Woman. I like both those films. Um, yeah, I right now I would say Man of Steel and then Flash. I, I, I love this movie. I think it's great. All right, what's next? Okay, Christopher Brickner writes, Indiana Jones 5 has mixed reviews and the Star Wars Hotel closes after just 18 months. Not Lucasfilm's best day. No, no, it is not. Kathleen Kennedy's got to go. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm a big fan of Kathleen Kennedy, but I've been saying for over three years she got to go. I'm a big fan of Ray Ora, yeah. but don't make him the general manager of the LA He's Lakers. Got to go. Oh, wow. I will tell you, I love Ray. He's yeah. great. He's fantastic, but he should not be the general manager of the Lakers. Kathleen Kennedy is a first ballot hall of famer producer one of the greatest steven spielberg calls her the greatest producer of all time great but that's different from being a studio executive and it's she's she's got to go she's got to go all right what's next all right we got fame blaze 71 who asks how are their box office predictions for flash when tickets aren't even on sale yet there's there's a multi-billion dollar industry that specializes in figuring out how this it's the same way it's like polling in politics uh, and you can say, well, they're never right. No, 98% of the time, it's usually pretty damn right. Um, so they have a lot of experience in this. They have an entire business model around this. So they're able to forecast this. And they're huge. I mean, look, it, it's not like they say it's going to, it will make 72.3 million and then it makes 72.3 million. But, mm -hmm. but a lot of the time, they're pretty close with their models. Their models and their forecasts are usually pretty close. All right, what's next? All right, Johnny Got Lost writes, do you think we'll get another Flash trailer and when do you think tickets will go on sale? Well, they've been putting a lot into new TV spots. We just saw a new TV spot yesterday. That was awesome. Like a really good TV spot. I think probably the best spot they've done so far. Another full-blown trailer? I don't think so. I think, I think they've shown everything they want and need to show in those trailers. I think they're going to focus most of their attention now on television spots. All right, what's next? 
Okay, we've got Fangblade 71 who's back. Uh, saw Fast X yesterday. My condolences. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. Oh, my condolences. I, I'm used to bad dialogue, but these in these, but geez, felt like there wasn't enough car action either. Oh, I never felt there wasn't enough car action. I, there was a lot of car action in this movie, I, I thought. But you're right. The dialogue is... A, can I say something else, too? That's just ridiculous. Ray, do me a favor. Double check. How old is Vin Diesel? <laughs> Look up the age of Vin Diesel. Okay. Look that up. Okay. I, I'm guessing 50-something. Well, so while he's looking up the age of Vin Diesel... Um, he's 55. 55. Okay. Now, how old is Moreno? The, the, the actress uh, in the movie, uh, she was just in West Side Story. I forget. What's it? Wha uh, Rochelle, Rachel. Not Rachel. Uh, um, I don't know. Why am I freezing on Moreno's act uh, name? Guys in the live chat, help me out. Well, she's only a legendary. Rita. Rita Moreno. Oh, I was going to say, she's only a legendary icon. Why am I freezing oh, on Oh, I was thinking you meant the newer West Side. How old is Rita Moreno? Uh, okay, so it's 91. 91. Okay. All right. So in the movie, I thought she was his mom. But she's not. What? She's his grandma. It's uh, like, she's only like 30-something years older than you, Vin. <laughs> yeah, she would have been 36. Yeah, well, well, I, hey, you could be grandmother at 36, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, you I can. I mean, you know. You can. If, a, if she was but, a teen mom and then her daughter was like, a teen mom. I know Vin Diesel wants to still believe he's 25. Who among us doesn't? Yeah. But... But when they said in the movie, like, I just assumed she was playing his mother. And when they say in this movie, when he calls her abuela, like, and they make it out that, uh, she, you know, they actually say she's his grandmother. Mm -hmm. I'm like, come on, Vin. Come Vin. on. Vin, come on. Come on now, Vin. Come on. She ain't old enough to be, you're not young enough to be your grandson. She ain't old enough to be your grandma. But I, I guess biologically speaking, maybe. Anyway. All right. What's next? Chef Rigo. Chef Rigo. Hey, guys. Rigo. <laughs> Just FYI, if you guys come, I'll still be able to cook for you. I also saw Fast 10 last night. Safe to say I'll probably never watch it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not a lot of love for Fast 10. Yeah. Not a lot of love for so Fast 10. I am so curious about the box office take on this, though, because everyone's seen it and everyone hates it, but they got their money opening weekend. Yeah, I'm. Uh, listen, they were projecting 60. I think it'll come in closer to 75. It makes but, all its money this weekend. That's it. I mean, okay. the theater I was in last night was half empty, but it was a 10 p.m. screening, so you, it was a little bit late. What do you think, 70% so. drop off next week? <sighs> well, Little Mermaid opens next week. Yeah. It could be a 70% drop off. Could be. Oof. We'll see. All right. What's next? Nate Cook writes, hey, John, I've been having this thought in my head for a while. And the question is, why do we have critics? <laughs> why can't people just be quiet and enjoy a movie? For me, critics ruin whole movie going experience. I think you're looking at it a little wrong there, but. I Critics meaning like, like why do we have talk? movie critics like people talking in the movie theater or just like, no, like movie... critics like why do we even have critics talking like reviewing movies oh well because going to a movie look i've said this before i'll say it again going to a, to a movie is an investment of resources you are investing your time which is a non-refundable right. non-renewable resource you're investing your time and you're investing your money i think you are a foolish consumer if you don't do a little bit of legwork to figure out, listen, I'm not going to buy any kind of laptop unless I put in the work and read what uh, what people who, right. for a living, get laptops, put the laptops through their paces, and tell me what they think of it. I'm not investing my money. I'm not going to be an uninformed consumer. And look, if a movie looks fantastic to you and you're dying to see it, right, then you're going to go get it. Like when I saw a phone come out that I really wanted, like no matter what, like I love that phone, I'm going to get it. Then I was going to get it regardless. But for most people, most of the time in most situations, you should make yourself an informed consumer. Right. Find a few film critics that you find generally speak to you and your sensibilities. And then before making a decision, now don't let them decide for you, but... Before you make your decision about investing your time and investing your money in going to see that movie, listen to what they have to say, make that a part of your decision-making process, and then make a decision for yourself. That is at least being an informed consumer. Make no mistake about it. You are investing time and money with your entertainment choices. You should probably do a little bit of listening to the people who watch it for a living. And again, don't let them decide for you. But just make it a part of your decision making and, process. And, and and finding a critic isn't even hard or, or like it should be hard. Like today I asked Anne, 
what she thought of Fast X. She said one word. That's my. That was my critic for this. Now I have. Now I know whether I'm going to go see it or not. Like. Honestly, let me you throw know, one more thing in there. I often help people say, I don't let critics decide. I make up my own mind. So you go to every single movie? No. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I just decide which ones look good to me. So, and this is true. Listen up. This is true. Somebody who says to me, I make, I just decide myself if something looks good to me. Okay. So by what? Well, trailers. Okay. So you are going to let the corporation tell you whether you should see the movie or not because movie trailers and i love movie trailers i made a whole documentary about them i love movie trailers but trailers are corporately produced pieces of manipulative media to get your money from you when you just go by the trailers you are letting the corporation which made a two minute piece of manipulative marketing be your main north star oh that doesn't sound bad at all. I'm going to let the people who want to get my money from me and are going to put together the most appealing looking thing they can to me. I'm going to let that decide about whether or not I go see a movie to me. Again, look, everybody has their own process. I'm just saying for me personally, that is not being an informed consumer. That is kind of being a bit of a sheep and letting the, letting the company tell you what you should see. For me personally, I'd rather go to people who have no skin in the game, mm-hmm. go to a couple of critics review. And again, they may say they didn't like it, but that won't stop me from seeing it if I want to. It's just, again, it's just extra information that helps you create your own well-informed decisions. All Pinball. right. Anyway, what's yeah. next? See, like I use the Fast X trailer to tell me not to see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there right. you go. Rovina and Phil- you are richer for it, my friend. <laughs> Bravina Films writes, if I want to work the corporate ladder and get a job in a studio in Cali, would it be better for me to apply or move there first? Uh, I work at a streaming service in Texas currently, but am, am, am limited here. Um, the world has shrunk. I would look, honestly, I think you could probably apply as long as you're in the country. I think you can apply from it from everywhere. Now, if I were an employer and I was hiring, I would, if all other things were being equal, I would probably go with the person who is local already. Uh, I, I, again, I don't know that that's her process. So mm, again, I'm not a career counselor, so don't take anything I say for this. I, I'm just saying for me personally, if I really wanted to work in the studios in LA, I would probably move here. So I'd be a little bit more appealing of a candidate when they're making those decisions. But again, I'm no expert on this. Take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. I would say just make sure you have a runway because it's expensive living in It's very expensive to live here. All right, what's next? Okay, uh, Ramsey Hamdi said, uh, writes, uh, hey, JC Crew, thank you for all the hard work. I appreciate you guys greatly. Keep prospering. Oh, thank you so much, Ramsey. Appreciate that, man, very much. All right, what's next? All uh, right, we've got Disgraceful Entertainment is back. Um, do you do the John Campia podcast uh, live or is it pre-recorded? I only get notifications after the entirety is uploaded. It is not live. Uh, one of the things that makes our life a lot easier is not doing it live anymore. Uh, it is pre-recorded. So we record it sometimes all in one take. Sometimes we don't do it all in one take. Uh, we record it and then we upload it and we aim to have it up and online like around two o'clock is when we kind of aim to have it by. We we're not always going to hit it at two o'clock on, on the nose, but that's what we aim but for. But this week, it's been fresh. As soon as after we're done, it's been up right away. Yeah, we've been so getting it up like and online hours pretty later. Fast. It's right away. Yeah, as soon as we're done and we get it processed and all that kind of stuff, we get it up and online. All right, what's next? CJ Rebirth writes, do you think they'll play Sunflower in Spider-Verse 2? Sunflower? That song. Uh-huh. They have to be uh-huh. the beginning, uh-huh. at least. Uh-huh. Nevertheless. They got um, yeah, they have to. Yeah, I think they'll play it at some point. I mean, they didn't play it in like the 30 minutes of footage we saw at the two CinemaCons, mm-hmm. but I got a feeling they will play maybe it. Maybe the end credits, like a callback. Yeah, maybe even in there. All right, what's next? Uh, okay, Ramsey is back, writes, I'm a storyteller practicing my craft now for almost 13 years. Nice. One of my weaknesses is creating great characters. What are some of your favorite uh, characters and what about them makes them your favorite? I, it's hard for me to say, I mean, like Magneto, let, let's start, let's just go to comic books. My all time favorite comic book character is Magneto. And I think part of the reason there's something I think a lot of us would identify with it, which is the, not necessarily the misunderstood person, but a, a character that is both misunderstood, but also has not come to grips with their own demons, which I think a, would speak to a lot of us as people, I think. Magneto is a fabulous character because not just because he has a great background, 
but because there's many layers to him. In his heart of hearts, Magneto, like many great villains, believes he's the hero of the story. He wants to protect his people. He wants mutants to be able to live, have a pursuit of happiness, live in freedom and live in safety and all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, from what he's seen of humanity, the only way to do that is to either dominate humanity or get rid of them, depending on the storyline you're reading. And so there's this constant shifting of the sands with the character of Magneto, which is one of the reasons why I love Age of Apocalypse is my all-time favorite comic book storyline. Because it really puts Magneto front and center. It's like, okay, what happens if Charles Xavier died when Charles and Eric were younger and Charles died saving his life? How does that core truths of Magneto go on a slightly different path? And it allowed us the opportunity to really look at different facets of him. I'd say complexity with tangibility is, is, is what I think is, is a key to a good character. But then again, I'm not like the world's great writer either. So uh, you tell me, man, you tell me writing great characters is a really, really key thing, but really, really difficult too. All right. What's next? Here's one of mine, which is why it's one of my favorite movies. Ah, uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. We've got um, Emma Murdoch. Let me just scroll down a second here. Uh, hey, crew. Uh, saw the, the CW reboot of Powerful Girl or Powerpuff Girls has been canned. Hmm. Not shocking given budget cuts and how poorly received its pilot script was. Okay. Maybe I've been in the dark. I thought they canceled that like three years ago. I think it's recent that it just got. Yeah. I mean, did it? Maybe there was a reboot or something. Did it actually come out? No. No, okay. The most we got was set picks. Because didn't didn't the girl from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Like, wasn't she yeah, at one yeah. point? I, I believe so. I Honestly, I thought that thing got canned like five years ago. I had no idea that was still a thing that was going on. Whew, right over my head. All right, what's next? Also, I just realized I skipped Disgraceful Entertainment here. I don't condone what Ezra Miller has done, but I'm able to separate the person from yep. the product. If I can watch Chris Benoit, uh, then I can watch The Flash. By the way, it's ben uh, Benoit. Benoit. Benoit um, Blanc. But look, and here's the thing. <laughs> I would probably feel differently about the Ezra Miller being in Flash thing if Ezra Miller had done all the crap and then they shot the movie with Ezra. Then I might watch the movie a little bit differently. But they shot that movie before Ezra really got themselves in trouble. And because of that, I don't hold that against the studio. And so I, I never want to see Ezra's flash again, Right. but this movie is really fantastic. And, and if you can just separate, if you love the flash, go see it because you love the character of the flash. Like if, if, if it takes you 10 years to watch this, watch it because you're doing yourself a disservice. At I the end of the day, movie. again, remember Ezra, People romanticize how important the actors are. I mean, actors are great. Actors are important. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, they are like everybody else making a movie. They are hired hands to help a director make a movie. There's like everybody else on set is there to help the director make the movie. This is not Ezra Miller's movie. This is Andy Muschietti's movie. So, and, and don't hold it against Andy Muschietti because Andy Muschietti made this movie with Ezra Miller before Ezra Miller, you know, went off the deep end. So I, I would, yeah, that, that's, again, but I do not want to take away anybody's right to mm -hmm. feel the way they feel about mm -hmm. it. I, cause I get it. It's a complex situation. However you feel about it is completely legit for you. I'm just saying that's the way I look at it personally. That doesn't mean you need to look at it the same way I do. All right. What's next? Uh, Jaden Voss writes, Ray, what is your dream crossover movie? Mine is Terminator meets Godfather. What's oh, Terminator meets Godfather terminal and pinball. <laughs> So like if he just played pinball in the I don't know terminal the that's whole such time. that's such a I'll think about it and then terminal can, meets can, pinball. I don't know it's the first thing because I love those two movies go ahead and go on I'll just think about it and maybe I'll have all right it. what's next all right oh well just Bruno Solo is giving us some support thank, thank you. you Bruno um, and then we've got Ramsey Hamdi who writes John I purchased your novel and respect greatly what you that you wrote it I remember maybe the, or something the story as to why you did it. Um, do you think you'd write another in the future? Yeah. So I actually wrote a novel at one point called, um, the pride. And I was actually making my movie, the anniversary when I had this idea for a story and I knew it was a story that I would never be able to make into a movie because it would be expensive because it involves dragons. I really wanted to make it a graphic novel. But at the time, I didn't have money to hire artists to, to actually draw the damn thing. So I decided to do something I'd never done, which was write a novel. It took me five years 
took me five years, gave me a huge amount of respect. And I would love to write another novel someday. I would, I would love it. I just have no time to even think about it right now. But maybe after I retire, I'll, I'll look at writing. Maybe even a sequel to The Pride. But by the way, thank you for buying my book. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Um, the book did way better for me than I thought it would. <laughs> so thank you for that. I appreciate that very much. All right, what's next? Amin writes, following up on uh, one of my tips yesterday, what do you think it was uh, about that AMC uh, Man of Steel vid that so many of us found us found you through? Uh, it probably just hit the right analytics, right? You know what? That's a really good question. I, I don't know what it because it's not like Man of Steel is the most popular comic book movie of all time. I, I just know what it is. What do you think, right? Maybe you had the opinion that not a lot of people did. And then people were just like, oh, maybe he's right about certain things. I don't know. There's vids that I catch where if if I agree or disagree with something, I'll keep an eye on that person. You know what I mean? Online. I mean, not in real life. I will not stop. Well, by the <laughs> way, uh, bring up uh, bring up the NDI for a second. Uh, for know. those of you, uh, little uh, self plug here. Um, Oh, do we have it? There we go. There it is. Available now. Uh, online. The Pride by John Campia. So uh, there it is. If you want to go check it out. Listen, <laughs> I am no Pulitzer Prize winning college. writer. Pop Let me just college. give you that heads up. Look, don't get me wrong. I'm very proud of my book. I really you am. Be. But I am no professional novelist. So keep that in mind. Don't expect to go in there reading the next great piece of uh, North American literature. But I'm very proud of my story that I you came up be. with. All right. What's next? Okay, Ramsey's back. Row curious some favorite uh, martial arts films, gents. Mine is Jet uh, Ali's Fearless. Beautiful Jet Li's display. It's probably meant Jet Li's. Oh yeah, Jet Li's Fearless. Beautiful display of storytelling through the art and culture of martial arts. Um, Shokasugi's Enter the Ninja, and Revenge of the Ninja. Um, Jet or no, not Jet Li's. There's an old kung fu film called Shaolin versus Lama that is not just great kung fu. It's like one of the most unintentionally funny movies I've ever watched in my life. Um, Jet Li's Hero is one of the most beautiful, look, like visually beautiful looking films I've ever seen in my life. Um, and uh, uh, Best of the Best, I think is one of my, oh, even though it's that. Not, oh, the, yeah. not the best martial arts in it, granted, but it's one of my all time favorite movies. And uh, the uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Blood sport. Um, you are next. Bolo Young, man. Bolo Young. <laughs> Biggest pecs I've ever seen on a human being in my life. Those are some of my favorites. Mine is the original Drunken Master with Jackie Chan. It's like 1978. I actually like the sequel even more. Yeah. I like the sequel through the sequel's more. great. All right, what's next? All right. Uh, Jaden Voss writes, I would love to see a TV show adaptation of the Shadow Children book series for Among the Hidden, Imposters Betrayed, Baron's Brave, and Enemy would be amazing to me. Googie, Iggy, Baggy, Boogie. I didn't know. That's, I don't know what any of that meant. Those must be some popular. <laughs> yeah, they must be. Look, I, again, I'm, I'm not caught up on the thing. But listen, I think more and more, if you're a fan of certain book IP, as more and more... Uh, these networks, streaming services and stuff like that are going to be getting really starving and desperate for IP and, mm -hmm. and for content. These things, books like these, now granted, I've never heard of them, but clearly you have and you love them. The likelihood of them getting picked up at some point gets bigger and bigger all the time. Would, would, would the strike affect them picking up novels, no. no stories from novels? But that no, well, are novels still have to. St novels will still need WGA writers to change to adapt them into screenplays. All right. So yes, it does affect that. Yeah. All right, what's next? Okay, we've got Disgraceful Entertainment. I need Michael Pena to get superpowers in the MCU. He's hilarious. In Ant-Man 1 and 2, the world deserves more Michael Pena. Doesn't need superpowers. You just need you just need Luis in there. He has a superpower. Luis. Uh, the storytelling yeah, is yeah. that, seriously, he is the, the most underutilized, fantastic character in the MCU. That character is one of the most entertaining most engaging. Your heart smiles the moment he comes on screen. I do not know why they're not doing more with Luis. Everybody has a Luis in their life. Just look. Just look really hard. You'll find that Luis in your life. You, you know, know who I mean? my Luis is? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's next? <laughs> All right, Rachel Knight online writes, uh, you don't do YouTube live streams anymore. I missed your shows all week. Yep. That, we're not well, doing the um, live streams. Oh, what are we doing right now? That's the live stream. Oh, We're doing a live stream right now. And she's here, I think, or he's here. So you didn't uh, miss. Yes, this is this is our live stream yeah. right now. Um, but yeah, th now the live streams we now do are open mic, uh, open spoiler discussions will be live streams as well. 
as well. If I when when I do on the occasion do after darks or ask me anything, those will be live streams as well. Uh, but yeah, the John Campy Show is now a podcast. Um, and again, look, I know that was a, a big shift for some people, but hey, guess what? It is what it is. I mean, it just it got to the point that it made a lot more sense for us to do it as a podcast. It makes our lives a lot easier doing it as a podcast. And um, like, man, we popped up on the Spotify and Apple podcast charts. And I mean, you, the response to the podcast only move was great. We didn't know if anybody would go over and start listening to the podcast. We still put the podcast up on the YouTube channel as an audio thing. You can just hit play on the YouTube channel and listen to it if you want. But we were so overwhelmed by how many people actually went and subscribed to the podcast, which was so gratifying for us. So thank you so much, everybody who did that. But, uh, but yeah, we still do live. I, we still do live. I cannot think of a crossover. I'm looking everywhere. I can't. So I might not have an answer for you guys. Mine is Matrix and the Terminator. I think that's the perfect crossover. Matrix oh. and Terminator is the perfect crossover. And is that it? That's it. And guys, that'll do it. For today's installment of Open Mic, thank you so much for being here and making this show part of your day this Friday. You guys got a weekend ahead of you now. I'm so excited for all of us. Uh, don't forget, on Sunday, we are going to do a Fast X Open Spoiler discussion. Uh, keep your eyes on the community tab. I'll announce on there what time that will be once I get a better idea of my schedule on the weekend. Uh, guys, thank you to all of you, especially those of you who sent in the tip questions, the super chats. Number one, because you gave us great fun things to talk about. But number two, you supported this channel as you did it and all of us involved with the show. Thank you guys very much for your support. Ray, you had something to throw in I there? got it. What Paddington it? and Rocket Raccoon. Buddy. Ooh. On an adventure. <laughs> I would watch that movie. <laughs> I would Sweet totally. Hard. <laughs> I would totally watch that movie. There, that's the only thing I can think of. That's I love hard. it. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for being here. Have a fabulous weekend. My name is John Campia. And until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.